Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we'll continue with our functional equation tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss one of my favorite problems because this problem actually illustrates nearly everything we've learned so far in this tutorial. So give it a try and then let's get started. So let's take a look at our problem. So in this problem, we're asked as usual to find all functions f from r to r such that we have the following relation. So f of x plus f of y squared is equal to f of x plus y squared. So what is the first thing we do when we have such a simple functional equation? Well, we try to show that f is surjective or injective. Maybe we cannot, but let's try. So if we want to show that f is surjective, let's take a look. Here, we need to use the free variable, and the free variable is clearly y squared. But the problem is that it's not completely free because it's y squared. So it's not y, it has to be, for example, positive. So in order to show that f is injective, or sorry, f is surjective, uh, here we have f of something. But here, this is not necessarily a surjective quantity because y squared must be positive or is positive. So we cannot cover all real numbers here. So right now we cannot show that f is surjective. So let's uh, try to show that f is injective at least. Well, again, we'll use this free y squared. So let's try to show that f is injective. So first of all, to show that f is injective, we need to do our uh, regular uh, thing that we do uh, each time, which is to assume that we have two, uh, two real numbers a and b such that a is not equal to b and f of a is equal to f of b. So let's write that. So we'll assume that we have a and b such that a isn't equal to b and f of a is equal to f of b. And then let's take a look. So we want to use y squared, right? So let's plug uh, here, let's substitute y with a and then substitute y with b. So here we're going to get the left hand side is the same. So if we subtracted these two uh, functional equations, we'll get that a squared is equal to b squared, right? So a is equal to either b or negative b. So basically, let's write that. So p uh, x a minus p y a, sorry, y b, or not y, it's x actually. So we're going to get that a squared is equal to b squared. So if f of something is equal to f of other thing, then this something squared is equal to that something squared, right? Which means that a is either b or negative b. But remember, here we've assumed that a is not equal to b. That means that a is equal to negative b. So this is the first thing we have. OK, so a is equal to negative b. OK, so can we actually reach a contradiction from here? Well, we have substituted y with uh, a and with b. But what about x? Let's try to uh, substitute x with a and with b. So we're going to get f of a plus this thing is equal to this, but here we're going to have f of a. So this time, the right-hand side is equal. So the left-hand side must be equal. So let's do this again. So basically, p this time, a y minus p b y. And we're going to get the following. So the left-hand side must be equal, meaning that f of a plus f of y squared is equal to f of b plus f of y squared. OK, so what does that mean? Well, remember, here we've just shown that if f of something is equal to f of something else, then something squared is something else squared, right? So this thing is either the same as this thing, or this thing is the negative of this thing. So we have two cases here. So let's discuss each one individually. So 
case 1, case 1 is if this is equal to this. So a plus f of y squared is equal to b plus f of y squared. Well, we can cancel this with this, meaning that a is equal to b. Well, this is clearly a contradiction because a is not equal to b, right? So this is wrong. OK, so what about the other case, the negative case? So case 2 is what if we have a plus f of y squared is equal to the negative of this. So minus b minus f of y squared. Well, remember that here we've just shown that a is equal to negative b, right? That means that a is equal to negative b. So we can cancel this one with this one. That means that f of y is equal to 0. Which means that our function is 0, the 0 function. But is that true? Does this function satisfy uh, the functional equation? Let's check. So 0 is equal to 0 plus y squared. Well, clearly not. So this is not acceptable as well. Well, so the two cases are uh, not acceptable, which means that our assumption is not acceptable, which means that we don't, uh, a is equal to b. So if f of a is equal to f of b, then we must have a is equal to b, which means that we have shown that our function f is injective. OK, so now let's write that down and erase what we have written. So that was a classical injective injectivity proof. So that means that f is injective. So we'll probably use that. OK, so since our function f is injective, so then let's use that. Well, what is the simplest thing to do with a functional equation? Of course, we need to substitute, right, with numbers. And the simplest thing we can substitute with is 0. So let's substitute x and y with zeros. So we're going to get p0, 0. zero. That means that here, the left-hand side, we have f of f of 0 squared is equal to f of 0. Well, if our function f is not injective, then this is pretty useless, right? Because who cares about f of f of z of f of f of zero squared? This is really ugly, right? But since our function f is injective, now fortunately we can say that this f cancels this f, meaning that f of zero squared is equal to zero, meaning that f of zero is equal to zero. So basically, let's write that in green. So f of zero is equal to zero. OK, this is nice, because now we can substitute x with 0 and y with 0. So let's substitute now here x with 0 and see what we can get. So p 0 y, that's going to give us um, f of f of y squared is equal to y squared. So actually, this is an important and useful relation. Because take a look here. It is really beautiful, right? So f of something is equal to y squared. So f of, f of y squared is equal to y squared. OK, so what does that mean? Well, first of all, whenever you see something like this, then you, sh you should think about showing that your function f is even or odd. Because you have lots of squared, and especially this one. And the way the method you can use is uh, pretty classical just substitute y with negative y so here if you substituted y with negative y you would get this will stay the same but this will change so let's actually write it uh, here so if we substitute y with negative y we'll get this is the same here but this change this so this is we're going to get something like this. So this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, which means that this is equal to this. 
But remember, f is injective, so we can cancel this f with this f. And that means that f of y squared is equal to f of negative y squared. So we have two cases. Either f of y is equal to f of negative y, or f of uh, negative y is negative of f of y. So basically, f is even or odd. But remember, f is injective, right? Which means we can never have f of negative y is equal f of uh, f of y, because that means that y is zero, right? So because f is injective, and you know that we don't have any function that is even and injective at the same time. Okay, so that means or that leaves us with uh, f the claim that f of negative y is equal to negative of f of y. So that means that f is odd. Okay, great. So now we have immediately shown that f is odd. So let's write that. So f is odd. Okay, great. So we are proving lots of useful stuff. So f is injective, f of zero is equal to zero, and f is odd. Okay, so what next? Well, take a look here. f of something is equal to something squared. Well, can't, can't we show that f is surjective from this relation? Well, f of something is equal to a free quantity or a surjective quantity. Well, this is a surjective quantity. Well, it, it, it is positive. So basically, we can show that f covers all positive reals. But remember, f is odd. So that means f must, covers, uh, must cover the negative values as well, right? So that means that f covers all real numbers, which means that Basically, f is surjective. So by using this one and this one, we get that f is surjective. Okay, so now we can write f is surjective as well. Okay, great. So you see this problem is really beautiful because we're gradually showing uh, lots of useful relations. So f is injective, then f of zero equals zero, then f is odd, then f is surjective. Okay, and basically now we have shown lots of stuff, so let's end this problem. Okay, so how can we do this? Well, now I want you to take a look at our original functional equation and remember this useful uh, property or this useful relation. Well, take a look here. Try to read this one loud. So we have f of x plus f of y squared is equal to f of x plus y squared. But remember, what is y squared? y squared is just f of f of y squared. So f of x here and f of f of y squared is here. So what does that remind you of? So basically, if we just set uh, z to be this thing here, so let's say that uh, z is just f of y squared, we're going to get the following functional equation. So our original functional equation, we can write it as the following. So f of x plus z is equal to f of x plus, we said that y squared is just this thing here, and this is z, so that means this is just f of z. And this is Cauchy's functional equation. So this is uh, Cauchy's additive functional equation, which has a solution f of x is equal to c x, right? But remember, we need to, uh, to do one thing more. So we need to show that our function f is increasing, right? So how can we show that our function f is increasing? We mentioned earlier in the previous uh, videos that all what you need to show is that f of positive is positive. So f of the positive here is positive. We already know that, right? Because this actually covers all positive because our function f is surjective, so f of y is surjective, so f of y squared covers all positive uh, real numbers, so f of all positive real numbers is always positive, so f is increasing, right? Okay, so we can write here, f is increasing as well. Okay, so f is increasing, but this is actually not Cauchy's additive functional equation, because take a look here. z is f of y squared. That means that z is not any real number. z must be a positive real number. So 
This is nearly Cauchy's additive functional equation, but with one condition, which is that z is positive. But does that break our proof for Cauchy's functional equation so we can't use it? Well, I want you to go to our uh, video in which we discussed this Cauchy's functional equation, the additive one, and try to find a proof in such a way that we don't uh, substitute the other variable. So if we have f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y, I want you to do the same proof but without substituting y with negative value. So if you need to substitute y with negative value, for example, if we did that in our video, then just substitute x with this negative value. And uh, luckily or fortunately, we're going to get the same proof and uh, nothing uh, matters here actually. And this condition is uh, actually doesn't break our solution. So luckily now we can confidently say, uh, say that f of x is equal to cx. I hope you can see the color. So let me write in green. Uh, so f of x is equal to cx. Okay, so now all what we need to do is just find this constant c. And the easiest way is just to go to this functional equation and substitute uh, f of x with cx. So let's do this. So this we're, go uh, we're going to get f of y is c y squared. So c squared times y squared. And this again gives us another c. So we have c cubed times y squared is equal to y squared, meaning that c cubed is one, meaning that c is one. So basically f of x is equal to x. And this is the solution, but let's check it out. So f of x is equal to x, so x plus y squared is equal to x plus y squared. And indeed, that is our solution. And so we are done. So as you can see in this problem, we have actually used everything we know so far. So first of all, we started showing that f is injective. And then we concluded that f of 0 is equal to 0 using injectivity of f. And then because of this nice and useful uh, relation, we showed that f is odd because remember, whenever you have squared uh, squared quantities, uh, try showing that f is odd or even. So in this case, f was odd. And then by mixing these two results, f is odd. And this one, we show that f is surjective, right? And then after showing that f is surjective, we, uh, we reached actually Cauchy's functional equation, the additive version. And we show that f is increasing by showing that f of the positive is positive because of this thing here. And then we show that f of x is cx and uh, concluded that c is 1, which means that f of x is equal to x. So this was really a beautiful problem in which like we have all in one, everything we've learned so far in this beautiful functional equation. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to uh, learn how to deal with uh, not real functional equations, but with uh, rational functional equations. So actually, I don't remember if we have solved a rational functional equation before, but in the next video, we'll do that. So if you enjoyed the video, like the video and share and subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next video.